Are we recording? Yes, we are. Hello, folks. It's a Sunday. Yes, it is. And it's exceptionally windy outside. So I was taking this opportunity. I've got a mountain of work to do. But uh, I was taking this opportunity to carry on my new exposure book that's going to be coming out. Um, and suddenly I get dogged by a little warning, which isn't going to show itself at the moment, but just a warning telling me that my monitor profile is out of date and I need to reprofile my monitor or recalibrate my monitor. So I just thought, well, better make a video. Yeah. Okay, so I'm on a ISO um, CS270 and I'm going to profile this monitor and I'm going to do it with a Color Monkey photo, yeah, which you can see sitting here. Now I've had this device for years and it's still as good today as it was the day I bought it. But anyway, so I'm going to uh, shut down Open Office because that will just complicate things when it decides to close. And of course I can't see the thing behind there, so we'll go save, yes, and now we are ready to rock and roll. So I don't use the x right Color Monkey software. Oh, there's the little warning look. Color Navigator 6, 706 hours have passed since adjusting your CS270 monitor. Please readjust. Yeah, so I use the software that comes with the actual monitor itself, um, which is um, ISO's Color Navigator. And I think we'd better go and fire it up and re profile the monitor so I'm just going to come down to color navigator here and you can see in my um, what do you call this thing um, I've forgotten what you call this now but anyway you can see me little icon for color navigators turn red so we are going to fire it up and I'll just pull it out to the side so I can see so 706 hours have passed so I'm going to profile it or reprofile it and I am going to calibrate it to 100 candelas per square meter, 6,500 Kelvin, with a grey balance and a gamma of 2.2. That's the way I always work. You'll see one or two people advise slightly different, but AO, this is the way I work. And so we're going to go adjust and of course the first thing i'm being asked is to actually change the position of the calibrator dial and i need to make sure that the bottom port is open um, so we can actually initialize and calibrate the color monkey so i'll click initialize and that's it it's calibrated so i can now place the color monkey on the screen with the actual port here over the little target area there and we'll just takes a bit of adjusting um, but it's just about right there so I'll now click proceed and so this is going to be it's going to take a couple of minutes but you'll see preparing the color test target that it's going to use and we will suddenly start to see little points going on this um, profile here on this profile spectrum and so it's measuring the monitor color now and uh, yeah so have fun but you'll now see that some of the points will start to drop on the three axes of this um, spectrum chart here and you can see I can move it around and play about with it yes so now it's adjusting the monitor gain to bring it within spec. And now we are going to start measuring colours and black levels. Yes, we are. And it uh, won't be too long now, and it will be finished. But I have to say that um, I can't emphasise enough um, how important keeping your monitor profile um up to date is 
um, because monitors, as they carry on in life, um, their backlights have a tendency to change in performance and as a consequence that affects the way they display their colours and you never know you might have had a driver update a graphics driver update and you, that might have changed the way your monitor behaves so it's always 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 um, the best policy to keep on top of your colour profile for your monitor um, people say to me well how often do you profile your monitor Andy um, not as much as I used to I, I used to be quite um, uh, anally retentive about calibrating my monitor especially if it was um, processing a big run of images um, but since I upgraded to this ISO which is a lot more stable um, than the monitor that I used to use and uh, since we've upgraded the machine to 10 bit color um, I actually just let the color navigator remind me uh, when I need to profile so anyway that's it the monitor has been reprofiled so if I just move this out here because I you can see it on the screen capture but I can't because my calibrate is stuck there so you can see that I wanted to have a target brightness of 100 candelas per square meter and the result is 100.3 uh, my black level is running at 0.23 candelas per square meter with a contrast ratio of 436 to 1 my white point was one my target white point was 6500k and I'm now running at 6490 um, red green and blue gammas are well we're requesting out at 2.2 on the target so what I want to do and you can see I've had 7172 hours of usage and it usually reminds me every 700 and odd hours so uh, you can sort of tell by that how many times I've run this profiler now I'm going to click finish and uh, so this is giving us a new dialog box which is asking me do I want to validate the actual profile now validation I'm going to put this when we calibrate we start off with a standard the standard is sent to the monitor this color monkey measures what's being displayed by the monitor and the differences between the display and the standard are written as the correction profile so that is the monitor profile now what we were we're going to do is a validation operation which validates the profile that we've just written against the standard or a n other standard in this case profile quality um, standard ISO um, 1264 which I suppose you can go and buy off the internet for about 60 million quid which is what they usually charge for um, copies of ISO standards well they don't charge that much but they are damned expensive so I don't know who the hell buys them but uh, we're going to profile um, not profile we're going to validate this profile now so I'm going to click next and then of course I'm going to have to recalibrate the monitor again this is the one thing about the um, ISO um, software color navigator that hacks me off because it doesn't maintain the calibration it sort of dumps it when it doesn't need it or when it thinks it doesn't need it anymore so you have to go and do it again anyway we'll go and click proceed and this actually sometimes takes longer than um, the actual calibration process but all it's going to do now is show a series of colors um, to the profiler um, and it's just going to validate what the colors are in the profile against the actual ISO standard and it's going to do 134 colors so uh, I will speed this up until we get to the end because the important thing about validation is actually seeing the validation variations 
so I'll speed it up and then when we've finished we'll get the validation report up and uh, I can go through it with you okay so I shall see you in a minute okay Here we go. So we're nearly done now. 132, 133, 134. Come on. There we go. And so what I'll do is I will move my colour monkey out of the way. And I might even just shut my little door in the uh, top of my monitor hood. I don't want to fit right so what we'll do is we'll click finish and now we can see we've got the validation record so what i'm going to do is click detail and what i am looking for is this column here which is the delta e 2000 yes doesn't that sound sexy but what i'm doing is i'm looking down the delta e 2000 uh, values to see if I've got any values that are in excess of one. Because if I've got a value that's in excess of one in that Delta E Delta E 2000 column, I will be concerned. And you can see that I've got 0 0.69 variation Delta E 2000 on the black, which is fine all the way down i have got nothing that even approximates a value of one in that delta e2000 column so i am well chuffed yes um not all um calibration software will allow you to do validation um but i can't think which ones do and which ones don't i know the, the standard color monkey software for my calibrator doesn't allow you to do it but check with your calibration software um, instructions and see if you can actually have this validation facility on it because it does come in handy it's good peace of mind and if you can validate the profile if you get a value of in excess of one you need to look at it and if you get a value of two Oh God, yeah, you, you need to do something really serious, like get a new monitor or get a new graphics card. So uh, anyway, there you go. Um, that's just a quick video. Well, I don't think it was very quick, was it? But that's just basically a quick run through of how I calibrate and validate the calibration on my ISO monitor. So until the next time, guys, I hope that was interesting and uh, I shall see you soon. If you like this video, don't forget, go and click the subscribe button, click the ringity tingity bell thing and get a notification of next time I put a video up. And uh, go and have a look at my Patreon uh, page because it would be really great if you consider signing up as a patron because it helps me keep producing this content for this video for free. All right then, okay. Thanks a lot guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheerio.